Hey guys, today we're going to talk about central retinal artery occlusions. Uh, this is my third uh, video in my series of ophthalmic emergencies. So let's go uh, to a quick overview of the anatomy. So ophthalmic artery is actually a branch of the internal carotid artery, which eventually gives rise to the central retinal artery. Okay, the central retinal artery supplies the inner part of the retina and the surface of the optic nerve. Now the outer part, I discussed in the, some of my previous uh, videos, that it's actually supplied by the choroidal vessels. 15% of the patients actually have a branch um, of ciliary circulation that helps uh, in providing blood supply to the inner retina. So in patients who have this, they have the benefit of some preservation of uh, vision in the case that they do have occlusion of the central retinal artery. This is just a figure that shows that. This is the internal carotid artery. So you can see there's a branch of ophthalmic artery coming out, which further divides down. But if you see this branch right here, that is the central retinal artery. The incidence is about 1 to 10 in 100,000. Mean age is about 60 to 65. More than 90% of these people are over 40. It's more common in men compared to women. And a lot of these patients have comorbidities like hypertension, smoking, and diabetes. Now, all of these comorbidities, comorbidities you would see in patients who have a high chances of having uh, plaques or, uh, or a clot. The cause is... In most cases, carotid artery atherosclerosis. Um, it's important to figure out what the cause is in patients just because it helps you um, uh, refer the patients to another specialty that could potentially help them or prevent them from having a, a stroke. A carotid endarterectomy significantly reduces the risk of future strokes uh, with retinal artery inclusion and high-grade carotid stenosis. The second most common cause is a cardiogenic emboli. It's more likely to see this in patients who are younger. And uh, it's important to identify this as well because, again, these patients may have AFib and might need chronic anticoagulation. And if they're not on this therapy, they could potentially have a stroke. Other causes of uh, central retinal artery occlusion are small artery disease. This is like a local... Uh, blockage within the central retinal artery. Uh, it's mostly, is it's a presumed diagnosis in older patients where you cannot find any other cause and if they have comorbidities like diabetes or hypertension. Uh, some other vascular disorders, now these are a lot less common, are like a carotid artery dissection, fibromuscular dysplasia, radiation injury which may cause constriction of the vessels, uh, things like sickle cell, if they're hypercoagulable for whatever reason, and leukemia, lymphoma, other things that could make them uh, hypercoagulable. Uh, as far as vasculitides goes, giant cell arteritis is a big one that you want to make sure you, you rule out in all patients. Uh, it should be considered in patients who are less than 50 and you don't see a, an emboli on your fundoscopic exam. Uh, other vasculitides to keep in mind are lupus, polyarteritis, and Wegner's. These patients will come in uh, and present with acute profound loss. Uh, it is painless and it, the vision could be as bad as just being able to, uh, um, to detect hand motion. However, as we talked about earlier, if they have a cilia retinal artery that is assisting the retina, um, the vision, visual acuity could be normal by 15%. Um, they can have complete or relative APD. Uh, a cherry red macula, which is a, sort of a, a buzzword that we hear a lot, and a retinal emboli can actually be visualized in 11 to 40% of patients. And if you see this white spot right here, um, that's just one, uh, that's a retinal emboli that you could see on your fundoscopic exam. A branch retinal artery occlusion is a variation of a central retinal artery occlusion. The clot in this case is more distal, so you still get vision loss, uh, but it's not as profound. There's usually a section of your um, visual field that's missing. Uh, and you're able to see retinal emboli more frequently, which makes sense because if the clot is more distal, then it should show up on your fundoscopic exam. Or if it's more proximal, it could still be in the central retinal artery and you're unable to appreciate it. The diagnosis usually does not require confirmatory uh, evidence. If you have someone with the physical exam, Findings are consistent with uh, 
central retinal artery occlusion, you go ahead and make a diagnosis. In atypical cases, you could do fluorescein angiography. Uh, you would like to do an ESR and CRP in all patients without a retinal umbilical artery just to make sure you can rule out uh, giant cell arteritis. Prognosis differ, um, is different based on the cause or based on the site of the retinal occlusion. So if it's more distal, about 80% recover with normal vision. But if it's central, uh, then the spontaneous clinical improvement is rare. There are some experimental, experimental studies that have been done that show the retina can survive for about 90 to 100 minutes after ligation of the central retinal artery. So as we just mentioned, so if 90 to 100 minutes, no retinal injury, but if it's more than 240 minutes, uh, it's massive, uh, irreversible injury. Anything in between is sort of a gray area. Um, so as far as treatments go, unfortunately there are not any clinical trials that determine uh, uh, if one treatment is more effective. Uh, some of the more routine procedures like the ocular massage, the paracentesis, the intraocular hypotensive agents have not shown to be any beneficial or not shown to have any benefit compared to just observation. However, the one exception is in patients who have giant arteritis because they do show uh, improved outcomes with corticosteroids. Some of the treatments that are still sort of in the works are revascularization <coughs> techniques. However, the data is conflicting. Uh, it's possible in the future they may be able to go in and do local anticoagulation or be able to get rid of the clot. But right now, because of the risks of bleeds elsewhere um, is so high uh, that it's, us it's not used routinely. Um, some of the conservative treatments, um, like I said, there's no evidence that one is better than the other, but I just figured you guys might want to know the, the rationale for using I any of these. The ocular massage is done because it increases uh, aqueous outflow when you press down, opens up the canal of Schlem. Um, the anterior chamber paracentesis, again, once you pull out some of the fluid from the anterior chamber, this fluid, the, the pressure inside the eye, the intraocular pressure decreases, which could help the, the clot progress more distally, and thus you'll be able to preserve more of the retina. You could do dehydrating agents like cetazolamide, mannitol, those can reduce your intraocular pressure. Nitroglycerin is a vasodilator, so once the vessel gets larger, it, the clot could potentially move uh, more distally. And you could also use 95% oxygen and CO2. The CO2 is just to cause vasodilation, and the oxygen is more to enhance oxygenation. So, like I said earlier, that once you've made the diagnosis of central retinal artery occlusion, it's important to figure out why this patient has this so you can prevent other things from happening. So in the setting where um, you think it could be carotid, you want to get a carotid ultrasound, uh, you could get a cervical MRI or CTA. Uh, in patients who have, uh, actually for all patients, you want to check an ESR and CRP presentation. If you think that it could be cardiac in origin, they may need a halter monitor, a baseline ECG to see, pick up on any rhythm abnormalities, mm -hmm. and an echo to see if there are any clots there. Uh, however, the yield is pretty low. Lastly, you might also want to do some hypercoagulable testing to see if there's something that's making them clot more... Uh, more easily than uh, an average person. Okay, so that's all I had for you guys today. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, any questions, please feel free to uh, comment below. Thank you so much.